guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video and happy new year i hope everybody had a wonderful time bringing in the new year with your family friends whomever it is that you spend the the new year with um your girl was a little bit extra this new year hands uh, along as a ponytail i'm gonna trip a little photo here of my outfit and let's go ahead and get on with this video stick around to the end for a little channel update as well but let's go ahead and talk about the last eight movies that I saw for the year 2021. Oh, we're gonna deal with the ring light situation because otherwise I can't see my screen. First up is West Side Story. This is Steven Spielberg's adaptation to this uh, musical. There is also a 1961 film. Uh, it's not really considered a reboot. It is his own interpretation of it. We do still have like the original music uh, with it. It is just a little bit out of order. I have seen the 61 version. I have not seen the Broadway musical I've never seen that Broadway musical I've always wanted to but uh, compared to the original film I do personally love this version a whole lot better I love that other one too not to a great extent like it's not one of my favorite musicals this is still not one of my favorite musicals of all time but this did take it to the uh, whole other level for me. I loved everything about it, the tone, the feel, um, everything, the acting. Um, it was great. It was a, well, not, not just great. It was an awesome movie, to be honest with you. I really loved it. Uh, moving on to Nightmare Alley. I do love me some Guillermo del Toro. Um, he has a very dark unique monstrous little way of filming um one of my favorite movies of all time of his and just generally of all time is pants elaborate i love that one i also love the shape of water um now this one is a little bit different compared to his other films in the sense that we don't actually get some sort of creature monster here so this is more of a noir type of crime thriller movie i do like how we go full circle with how everything kind of happens and stuff it's a really good movie um ah, it's good it's great it is i mean awesome i need i don't have great on here why do i keep saying great i don't i don't know it's a good movie you guys it's a really 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 good movie very close to awesome but not quite there up next would be being the ricardos it's, it's a movie that is in both theaters and on amazon prime uh west side story and nightmare alley are both strictly in the uh theaters being the ricardos it's basically I don't know, like a biopic, I guess, in a way, but we're just strictly in a week's worth of what happened behind the scenes of the I Love Lucy show. Um, so it is different than what I was expecting, even though I didn't really know what I was expecting going into this movie. I really thought it was going to be more about the show, given it's called Being the Ricardos. I feel like if it was going to be behind the scenes, maybe it should have been called like Lucy and Desi or I don't know. I don't know, something else. Now... Oh shit, I did not put pause over here. I am so sorry you guys, I totally forgot to stop my dryer. Oh well, I'm not gonna redo this. We're just gonna deal with the dryer noise there. Because I was not somebody who looked into the backstory of I Love Lucy. A lot of the things that were mentioned in the movie, I was not aware of. Even though I love, 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 love the I Love Lucy show. One of my favorite sitcoms of all times. But just as far as their own personal lives, again, what happened behind the scenes, I wasn't aware. I just never really made it a point to look into it. Uh, now one of my friends who absolutely loves I Love Lucy, actually the one that did my hair, shout out Sade uh, she knows a lot about I Love Lucy she said that she was a little bit disappointed in the film because she already knew most of the things I think there was probably like one one or two things that she was not aware of so it was a little bit disappointing so just kind of take that into account when you watch the movie that you may already know a lot of these things it was a good movie overall I did quite enjoy it I feel like if you are a fan of I Love Lucy you're gonna enjoy this all right moving on to the Matrix Resurrections I think when I was doing my review I kept calling Resurrection but there's an S at the end this is part four of the Matrix this is a movie that's in theaters and on hbo max Be i really don't even know how to talk about this you guys i really don't okay unless you're a big matrix fan you can watch this in theaters just to get that whole matrix feel theatrical feel of it but if you're not really a matrix fan like me i started at home and i was fine i mean there's times that i'm like oh these visuals would look really nice on the big screen but just as a whole this movie was not good uh i won't put it on bad but i'll put it a 
that you tried because it did try to bring that nostalgia feel to it. Uh, the best part for me was honestly Neil Patrick Harris. I was really here for him as the analyst. I haven't really heard anything about him to be honest with you. So I don't know how people, other people feel about him, but I was here for him. I didn't really like what they did uh, with Agent Smith. I didn't like the new character. Uh, well, like the reincarnation version of him. I just wasn't here for him either. I just didn't like where these characters are now in life. I mean, it makes sense on how uh, Matrix uh, Revolution ended, which honestly, when that movie ended, I was just like, well, what the hell happened to Neo? I'm like, I know people like hated this movie, but I'm just like, what the hell happened to him? Well, now I'm glad that I only had to wait a week to find out because I had never seen um, Resurrection, no, Revolution up until like a week before this movie came out because I always heard it was bad. So I'm like, okay, well, it's nice to know. I don't know. We're going to move on to Don't Look Up. This is a Netflix movie. So I have heard terrible, terrible things about this movie. Some people hated it. Some people like me enjoyed it, didn't really think too much of it. I've actually seen it, I think, on one or two people's best of the year. So there's that as well. So there's just like mixed reviews on this. But this is a movie that is based on a true story that hasn't happened yet. It is a take, a look into um, like climate change. Uh, yeah, the climate change, global warming, I think stuff like that. I had heard people talking about the pandemic and COVID that it has stuff to do with that. But... From what I, on my understanding, from the director, is supposed to be about the climate change. So yeah, can correct me down below because I could be totally wrong about that. But basically, there's this meteor that's coming to Earth. This comet meteor, something's coming to Earth is going to destroy us. So it's supposed to be one of those end of the world movies, but not with the extent of the end of the world disaster movie that we love with the action and all that other stuff. No, in this case, it decided to put it into this kind of comedy movie that I did not find funny. There was parts of it that I did laugh. Well, honestly, the only part that really made me laugh was the end credit. So there is an end credit to this. So just fast forward it to, um, well, I think it's like more of a mid credit scene. This was an okay movie for me. Okay, we're, we're going to leave it at that. I do have a review for this. Oh, as always, whatever I did review within the month will be in the description box down below, which actually... For the first time, if I recall correctly, I have a review for all these eight movies. So moving on to Spider-Man No Way Home. This is like my third, fourth time talking about this movie. I just saw this for the second time yesterday oh, and I loved it just as much. I'm going to be talking spoilers here uh, because this movie has been out for a while and I feel like at this point, there's like all the spoilers are out there already. And I really, really want to talk about the spoilers. I did say in my review that I was going to talk about spoilers. Oh, no. But then I, when I did my ranking list, I did say I was going to talk spoilers there and not here. Okay, never mind. I won't take it. I'll take it back. <sighs> I'm just going to put it here, you guys. It's favorite of the year. Uh, my top 10 movies of the year came out yesterday. This movie is up there. Check that video out so you can see where it is um, on that. Yes, the beginning part of the movie is more of a slow burn. That's where not a lot of people's like, issues are. But... I'm here for it. I enjoyed it. I don't care. I love this movie as a whole. Of course, all the greatness, the magic and all that happens, you know, halfway through the movie where we get all the multiverse people coming through. All right, moving over to The King's Man, which is part three of this franchise, but technically it is a prequel to the first two that we had. It's almost like they were trying to do a, a Kingsman movie, but they were also trying to do a war movie. And they're like, they, the studio, I guess, wanted them to work more on or be more about the war type. It's a war movie, you guys. I really wasn't here for it. It was very disappointing. I'm going to say it's okay. It does have some really good action um, with it. Um, I love Rasputin, of course. And then last on my list would be Scene 2. This is actually the last movie that I saw um, in theaters for 2021. This is a sequel, of course, to Sing. Uh, we have amazing voice um, cast here. And it's a bigger, bigger production. I did miss like the first, I don't know, like six minutes of the movie because we were picked up late. And somebody did tell me I missed a lot within those six minutes, which I knew I missed a lot. Uh, but yeah, it was a really, really um, good movie. I really do prefer seeing the first scene. That one just hit me in a more emotional way. Just like any sequel, we got to go bigger and grander. When they were talking about this space journey, it was just like, I don't... I don't know how this is going to work out. 
let her know because it's Gunther who's doing it, but it worked. It looked beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. It's absolutely wonderful and great for the whole family. Um, all right, guys, so these are the eight movies that I saw. Um, in December 2021, the last eight movies of the year. Let me know down below what did you see in the month of December? What were the last movies of the year that you got a chance to check out? Did we happen to check out any of the same ones? Do you agree with where my list is? If you don't, that's totally fine, you guys. Everybody is different. Now, as far as my update goes, it pretty much is the same update that I gave you guys a couple months ago, but we're gonna make it happen <laughs> this time this year, you guys. I don't know what the hell I was thinking last year because we were coming close to the end of the year. When all the movies were coming out, all these bigger blockbusters, all these like sequels and these franchises, and I had to rewatch movies and do rankings, it was just too much. I should never have done that update then, you guys. But fresh start, you guys, beginning of the year. Like I said last year, we're gonna try to really minimize the number of new releases reviews that I do on this channel and just pre pretty much focus on like the bigger blockbuster uh, movies or like the bigger movies as far as streaming wise goes. Uh, I do want to focus this year a little bit more on TV shows um, and just review each season or seasons as a whole not episode to episode because those episode to episodes uh, it's a hassle. I did it once with the boys like season one and I'm just like never again will I do that. It's just too much. Honestly since I started my YouTube channel I have been slacking on TV shows um, before I did my channel. Pretty much all I watched were TV shows and watching movies was very small to honestly. You're probably like, no, Stephanie, that's a lie. No, 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 really. It was like, I was opposite, <laughs> opposite on there. Um, so I do kind of want to get back and try to maybe even it out as best as I can. But I do want to uh, get more into uh, TV series and of course do my retro review slash, you know, first time watch uh, movies because again there's just so many movies that i haven't seen that i want to you know get a chance to check out and talk to you guys about it yeah that's just my update on what's to come for 2022 that is the plan we'll see how it plans out <laughs> hopefully i can stick to it i think i can because i do really want to watch a lot of these um, sh um series we are of course still gonna do these monthly wrap-ups because i'm still gonna watch uh new movie releases but we're just not gonna talk about them too much here solo reviews on the channel all right you guys so that is it for me today if you haven't don't forget to give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet we are on the road to 500 subscribers and of course don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye